consumption of raw milk from citizens who own all or share so-called herd sharing of animals that produce milk. It is also important not to confuse organic milk and organic dairy products, which are processed and packaged under USDA and FDA regulations, and raw milk. They are not the one and the same. The U.S. Center for De Disease Control in the last two year summary declared raw milk as one of the most common food vehicles associated with food borne diseases and recommends no one consume unpasteurized milk. The CDC estimates the risk for an outbreak of raw milk is 150 times greater than the risk from pasteurized milk. The CDC data shows raw milk and raw milk products are proven vehicles for many foodborne illnesses, including salmonella, brucellosis, dyspirosis, and E. coli. Some of these illnesses are mild, while others are deadly. In 1987, the FDA mandated pasteurized of all milk and milk products which in effect banned the shipment of raw milk in interstate commerce. Twenty-one states do not allow any raw milk consumption. Twenty-nine other states have restricted raw milk consumption. As an example, Colorado only allows cows and goat shares only. Texas only allows farm sales. Due to the increased risk in consumers' interest in Due to the recent interest in consumers in natural food products, the emphasis of the disease from raw milk consumption has risen significantly. On February 15th of this year, a disease outbreak due to raw milk consumption occurred in Alaska that included an infant, children, and elderly are the most at risk due to low immune system resistance. January 11th of 2013, an outbreak occurred in the state of Missouri. December 13th of 2012, raw milk caused an undetermined number of illnesses in Pennsylvania, and the list goes on. In 1983, Mexico was the first state to experience an epidemic of fruit sea. I think that is streptococcus. Infection, which resulted in eating raw milk cheese. Two of the infected people, one of which was Senator Alex Martinez, died from the infection. And, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like the, uh, Governor Bradley to, to make a statement if he's up here. Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, the, the incidents of, um, that's been stated in the report uh, by Senator a little, a little nerve, nerve wracking and very, very worrisome to uh, the very industry. And, and the reason is there is no test that you can do uh, for raw milk that will, that will take care of all the pathogens that uh, potentially carry uh, through raw milk. But uh, the most common thing is that uh, uh, fecal matter uh, is a carrier and it can, it can get congested with the uh, the incidences have, have risen to over, and I think you've got several analysis talking about the, the incidences of, of the disease. And the problem is that every time one of these outbreaks happens, it puts a bad picture on milk, period. People don't, the uh, perception of people is that you don't, uh, they don't differ between raw milk and regular milk. Retail sale of the raw milk is, is considerably higher in the uh, perception wise, in that people go to a store, if they were to go to a store and see, uh, see a package in a, in a store, they would make the assumption that there are protections for them through USDA and FDA, and they're not. So the ability for that perception. Uh, of people to pick it up and then not knowing where that milk actually came from, not knowing anything about the cow, 
uh, creates the issue that's before you today. It is not a uh, uh, people. I, I'll be the first to say I drank the raw milk when I was a kid. Came from a cow that we owned, and we knew the health of, and we milked it, and we made sure that it was clean. Uh, you don't always know that. And that's the reason all these instances of outbreaks have happened uh, all around the country, and the reason the CDC has put it on their red alert and uh, elevated raw milk now to that uh, number one level of. of uh, Carrying the airborne disease. So, with that, Mr. Chairman, I think it's a health issue, extremely. Uh, I would venture to say that if you don't know where that raw milk that you're consuming it, you don't know what cow or milk that came out of it, uh, you're taking a huge risk of, of your family uh, and the health of your children. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, let's just do this first. Let's go to the audience. A show of hands for those in support. Uh, in opposition. Okay, so let's just let's start with a couple in support, and then we'll go do some in opposition in support of the bill. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Beverly and Zinga, dairy producers of New Mexico, Mr. Bradley came to our board um, with this bill earlier You've got their last numbers. year, They're and they voted yes. Martinez is on this way. We have this one on the bill. Who else in support? Uh, yes, ma'am. Here, we might have my name is Dixie Trevi, and I'm speaking to you as a person who grew up on a farm that had milk cows and who owned a farm that had milk cows. If you don't understand the makeup inside a cow, you may not understand what could possibly happen to this milk. But cows have two stomachs, and not only uh, what they're eating, and what it may be next to that goes into their mouth, but sometimes in the process of moving through the regurgitation and back to the second stomach and on, they can pick up things that have been sitting there from previous things that they ate. Now what we did, and I'm talking late 40s and early 50s, if we were going to drink our own milk, we strained it with cheesecloth like three different times, or we actually boiled it if it was for a small child or a baby. Mostly, we sold our milk to the creamery who pasteurized it, then we could buy it back from them. So, unless you really know the makeup of the inside of a milk cow, you may not be able to realize just how hazardous it could be. Great, thank you. Anyone else in support? Uh, in opposition? Uh, my name is Greg Nussbaum. I apologize for being late. I'm from Community Policy. We are the, uh, the only uh, grade A raw milk dairy in the state of New Mexico. We run a farm school in Santa Cruz. <coughs> and as, as uh, I, I look at this bill, uh, part of my uh, uh, response to it is that when you look at the United States, there's 39 states where it's legal to uh, retail sale of raw milk. Uh, in terms of our dairy, our dairy is inspected by uh, the New Mexico Department of Agriculture, the Dairy Division. I think Alf Reed is here somewhere. Uh, was the uh, technical representative for the state. And actually, we're the most inspected. We're, we're the most inspected here. Uh, and the raw milk is, is something that's really looked at closely. The, uh, the government only allows us like four days in which to sell our products. Our product is actually fresher. Uh, I think if you look at... Uh, some of the CDC and the FDA uh, uh, statistics, uh, as, you, as you read into those and look at them, there's an organization called, there's two organizations. <coughs> one is Farm to Consumer, uh, and the other one's Real Milk. Uh, both of those have web pages which go through a lot of the statistics. And some of their points are that uh, when, you, when you look at raw milk dairies, they they have been growing in the United States and doubling every two to five years in terms of the number of raw milk dairies that we have. So it's a big growth industry. Uh, it is very regulated. It is very inspected. And statistically, I think they tend to be cleaner. And when you, when you look at that industry, especially when you take into consideration our dairy, our dairy is organic. And all we provide is organic alfalfa, organic grain for our goats. Our goats get into free pasture access. If you compare that to commercial dairies that are running GMO alfalfa and GMO grains, and 
and not pasturing their animals. Our animals are infinitely cleaner than this. Um, the, uh, again, I think that in, in terms of this legislation, I, I respect the senators for considering uh, health issues. It is an important thing for the government to regulate. Uh, I, I think we're kind of backwards on this one. You know, I think in terms of health issues, I'm about to look at the pasteurized milk that's getting genetically engineered grain, genetically engineered alfalfa, and creating lactose intolerance in a population. Uh, I don't think the raw milk people are, are responsible for that. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone else in opposition? Yes, sir. Well, I have a bunch of information which I'd like to hand around. My name is Steve Warshower. I am a small herd share producer here in Senator Wirtz's district and also work for Alamontini Tacot, which is a retailer who has historically sold raw milk and is shortly hoping to begin doing so again. Um, oh, God. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry, that was just me. <laughs> <laughs> this bill comes to us as a food safety bill, and I wanted to talk a little bit about food safety because this is probably the single biggest issue um, that's going to continue coming forward in different ways to us uh, that has a sort of a, a, a double-edged sword about how we create opportunity for producers and preserve choice for consumers. Um, creating a safe product begins with producer training and implementation of best practices and continued improvement through scientific research. It also occurs best through public education and outreach in which we warn people about the diff different risks associated with different foods. And to demonstrate that and how it works in the retail channel, I've brought you an empty bottle of raw apple cider, which carries the warning this product has not been pasteurized. It may contain harmful bacteria that can cause illness in children, the elderly, and persons with weakened immune systems. Folks might want to group that, or maybe it's just interesting to me. I don't know. Um, the last piece is agency oversight through registration and inspection regimes. Um, and the key piece of food safety that we are hearing the industry uh, concerned about is uh, accurate public notification in the event of an outbreak. Um, the, the outbreaks that are being referred to in raw milk were always clearly identified as such. So the notion that uh, the public can't tell the difference between a pasteurized raw milk outbreak and a, a pasteurized milk outbreak and a raw milk outbreak is really the responsibility of our public health officials to avoid. The best way to protect the public against the risks associated with raw milk is not to make it illegal, it's to make it legal and keep it legal. Because by a product <coughs> being legal, that makes its production, gives it, its producers opportunity to access the best training to participate in public education and outreach, and it gives us access to agency oversight, which we depend on. Um, uh, Greg alluded also to the economics, which are very important to consider, especially now. Um, I have one more piece. I only made one copy of this one. If you could send this one out to Senator Worth. Uh, typically, the raw milk producers are the smallest producers of milk. And right now, you know, from a standpoint of, of rebuilding our economy and you know, creating jobs, this report talks about how very small businesses create up just about all of the jobs post-recession. So when we, also, when we look at the opportunity aspect of milk production, we want to be very careful not to create regulations that drive our smallest businesses away because they are the businesses that are creating jobs. Um, nationally, New Mexico has a unique role in food safety. We've seen this over the last few years in which our, we've been at the epicenter of several food safety incidents where our, our epidemiologists have played leading roles in limiting the um, threat and negative impact of those outbreaks and our state, uh, our state Department of Agriculture and public health officials have played important roles in protecting our industries in the state and in assisting with communication with the public <coughs> to minimize the adverse effect of those outbreaks. So let our, me make a suggestion, because if you're just reading what we've got... I'm not, sir. No. Okay, good. That's why I handed that one around to you. And, so I'm, and I am nearly done. You give me, give me a, is this a one-minute warning? Thank no, you. That's <laughs> beautiful. Our, our regulators 
clearly, a, so, so the examples I want to point to is 2008, there was a salmonella outbreak at the epicenter of the end here. Our uh, state officials helped protect New Mexico tomato growers when FDA uh, uh, put out warnings about tomatoes, which turned out to be incorrect. Um, our Department of Agriculture took steps during that outbreak to be sure that New Mexico tomato growers could still sell their product even while major food chains were removing uh, tomatoes from the shelves. In the Jensen Farm cantaloupe outbreak, a lot of the epidemiology that quickly traced that back to its source was led by work here in New Mexico. And FDA has recognized our work sufficiently that they've invested in this state in helping us create the Southwest Border Food Defense Alliance. That alliance is a place where stakeholders and industry in the public sector, the public regulatory sector, uh, and um, uh, work together to develop best practices and learn how to um, minimize the impacts and prevent the, the outbreaks in the first place. So if there's any state which doesn't have a problem with protecting the public health and with, incre with improving access and protecting opportunity, New Mexico would be that state. So I would simply ask that we not put ourselves in the lead in a restrictive measure that we continue to lead in cooperative and collaborative measures that create opportunity for farmers, choice for producers, and also continue our leadership nationally in this important area of food safety. Thank you very much. Good, thank you, and I appreciate it. So basically what you're saying is you'd like some kind of a collaborative sit down and be and willing to be you're willing to be at the table. We have a venue for that, which is the, the Food Defense Alliance. And uh, honestly, I'm surprised to be here having to take up this much of all of our time on this subject because I firmly believe that if the if the issue was brought first to that alliance forum, what well, the kind of solutions we come out with would properly protect our larger family farms as they deserve and would ensure opportunity for our smaller farms as well. And that we know how to do this. In New Mexico, we know how to do this. So this is the last place that a ban on raw milk should be added to the list of states that are in. Just, just, just from a process standpoint, let me say, and I'll, I'll be the first to also raise my hand, that I've had a bill in this, in this session as well that probably starts a discussion. So that can sometimes happen as well. So uh, let's go out and uh, Pam, the opposition. Well, Mr. Chairman, committee members, we want to say we really respectfully uh, appreciate that uh, Senator Woods has introduce brought... Introduce yourself for the record. Oh, my name is Pam Roy, and I'm here representing New Mexico Farmers Union. And we appreciate Senator Woods bringing this bill to uh, this committee and to the public. Uh, we, too, uh, really feel that there's an, um, an opportunity to keep raw milk um, and that people can purchase it legally. Uh, and feel that it is an important industry in New Mexico for uh, in particular smaller producers, and we hope that you will um, understand our opposition to the bill. And we just spoke to Senator Wood about it, and look forward to working with him on it in the future. Great, thank you. In opposition, anyone else? Yeah, Ethan. Um, I'm Ethan Ganauer with Food and Water Watch, New Mexico. And just so you can stand up when you're presenting. Thanks. Um, there are already safety standards in place in the current New Mexico law. Those are uh, determined by the Board of Regents of New Mexico State University, in other words, NMDA. And those are that raw milk shall contain no more than 20,000 bacteria per milliliter and no more than 50 co coliform bacteria per milliliter. And within two hours after completion of milking, the raw milk should be cooled to a temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit or less and maintained at that temperature until sold to the consumer. Um, I think the... The allegations that raw milk is unsafe have been vastly overstated. Um, I want to cite from a study by the Weston A. Price Foundation, which uh, is based on U.S. government data um, and government-sanctioned reports on foodborne illnesses, which show that the risk of contracting foodborne illness by consuming raw milk is much smaller than the risk of becoming ill from other foods, according to research by Dr. Ted Beals. Uh, MD appearing in the summer 2011 issue of Wise Traditions, the quarterly journal of the West A. Price Foundation. At last, we have access to the numbers we need to determine the risk of consuming raw milk on a per person basis, says Fally, Sally Fallon Morrill, president of the West A. Price Foundation, a nonprofit education foundation that provides information on the health benefits of raw whole milk from pastured cows. The key figure that permits a calculation of raw milk illnesses on a per person basis comes from a 2007 Centers for Disease Control. Uh, Foodnet survey, which found that 3.04% of the population consumes raw milk, 
or about 9.4 million people, based on the 2010 census. This number may in fact be larger now as raw milk is growing in popularity. Um, in addition, Dr. Beals has compiled published reports of illness attributed to raw milk from 1999 to 2010. During the 11 year period, illnesses attributed to raw milk averaged 42 per year. Um, his conclusion is that using government figures for food board illness for the entire population, uh, it shows that you are about 35,000 times more likely to get sick from other foods than you are from raw milk. I see the guys from the trial lawyers here. Are you uh, in a post opposition to this bill? We're not here on the bill, sir. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, disappointed. Well, <laughs> we didn't think so. I, I would, yeah, I, I would, you know, I, I think what, what what is likely to happen is is when we get an outbreak, you're going to have uh, these, you're going to have people wanting to shut you down. And I think I think that's just the nature of it. We don't. Uh, if we don't, you know, move to, over, we've got to over-regulate this. We've got to make sure that uh, that all these dairies are, are inspected and clean, and that takes time and money and effort. I, I mean, I guess I see the, the interest of the bill is just to just stop it, but if you don't stop it, you got to either label it that says this stuff, you know, may cause death, um, like, like they do on some of the other products, but if you don't do that, you've got to have inspectors coming through your place and, uh, you know, hassling you and regulating you. Um, you know, I guess this is just one way of, of dealing with uh, a potentially dangerous situation. Um, uh, thank you. Okay. Any, anyone else? No, I'm not going to go back out to the audience. Hang on. All right. Other members, questions? <clears throat> so, Senator Woods, I mean, Again, it does. What I'm what I'm hearing here is they want to sit at the table and have a discussion about the health piece of this. And I just, I mean, I, I do think it's important. There's an acknowledgement, I think, of the, of the importance of it. I think Senator Ryan's right. I'm hearing that it, this has got to be done carefully, um, and it's got to be <coughs> regulated more than a typical. Dairy, I think everyone's kind of agreeing on that piece of it, and I just, you know, wonder what's your what's your what's your thought about that, right. Mr. Chair? You know, I'd like to respond to, to one or two things. You know, if it was brought up about mm -hmm. uh, if you feed the organic food to an animal, it's automatically going to be a better product less illness. Uh, there are some, some apatoxins in particular is a mold that, is, that happens during storage of the brain. And it has absolutely nothing to do with, with the characteristics of that, of that genetic makeup of that brain. It's simply a storage problem. A lot of times this brain was put in, in the storage too wet. And, and, some, and, and the problem with that is that even in commercial, large commercial dairies, they test for that in the milk because that passes right straight through the cow. In large commercial dairies, they actually make them dump that milk. And not only that load of milk, they make them dump milk for several days after that. They go to that dairy, they locate the source of that food. And they, if it's one cow, if it's, if, I mean, this field is, is a deadly thing to happen, and it just comes from grain, poorly stored grain. But what I'm getting at, I, you know, I, I hear the, the, the words about it, and I, I understand it, and I understand that we're talking about some very small producers, and we're probably talking about very small saves within the state. What I'm wondering, are these producers willing to label their product the safety warning? And would they agree to further regulation by NMDA? And would they... 
Sorry, I'm really seeing any testing that needs to be done in order to make this make sure that we are have a safer product for the consumer. And if they would agree to do that, I would let NMDA work with them and put further regulations on them. <coughs> and I would pull my trigger tonight. So I, I guess uh, you know again it sounds like that's a a discussion that needs to happen. I mean, I think there's no question. Uh, what level this is going to be regulated is kind of the, is the issue. I think. You know, this bans it outright. Yeah. And can it be regulated? Yeah. That's right. The matter is where it is being regulated, and in many states, of the 29, there's 29 states that do have regulations on it. 21. Forbid it, sale period. The issue becomes, and, and, and <coughs> can we even test it? Is there a regulatory process that, is, that would work? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. So, <clears throat> but but that is that will be the issue. Can we get it to where it's a, a safe product for the consumer? Sure, maybe, maybe a way out of the box. A sponsor of loan to work with the Department of Agriculture. <coughs> To come up with a list of proposals where, where the agriculture department says, no, this this is a safe Are product. They and they, whatever, whatever the VA says, that they, they will test it for toxins, they will test it for pathogens, they will test it for, for you know, E. coli and everything else. Maybe, now I'm not sure the small producers want that level of regulation, but, you know, the, the counter to that is, you know, if, if there is this danger out there, I think it needs to be labeled. And certainly, I, I, it was facetious for those of you not on Judiciary Committee seeing the uh, trial lawyers back there. They have uh, just these, these are these are great lawsuits if someone gets sick. I imagine there's a few attorneys out there that'd be willing to uh, take the case against the small producers. So it, it's serious business. No one wants to harm small producers in the state, but it, it would appear that. There is there is differences of opinions as to safety, and I'm not an expert. Our Department of Agriculture is, and if they, you know, can assure us that this is not an issue, I'm fine with that. If they say no, it's an issue. Maybe we need to do X, Y, and Z. I'd, I'd be willing to, to discuss doing that if the sponsor would be willing. To I, would, I would, uh, Mr. Chair, I would be willing to do that, and uh, I would stand for any more questions. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. The, the only concern I have is. You know, this regulation, this labeling, and, and all this stuff that the small producers are going to who's going to pay for that? Is it going to be the dairy farmers that are going to, have to pay for that? Is the Mexican state going to pay for that? I mean, the dairy farmers right now are on the verge of shutting down. Just basically because of the economic situation that we're facing here in the state of New Mexico. And also because of the, law, of the of rules and regulations that have been imposed on them. Now we're trying. Now we're going to go impose more regulations on them, telling them they have to label their milk, they got to go and test the milk, and they. But who's going to pay for that? You know that that's the concern I have. And um, you know, where does this bill go to from here, Senator? Judicial. It goes, it goes to judiciary. judiciary. So if we can let it out of here and let it on its way to judiciary, maybe in the meantime you can talk with uh, New Mexico State and find out where this thing. What's going to happen is this thing? What is the what is it going to cost the dairies to do? The dairies are stepping up right now, and they're saying, Mr. Chairman, you know, we don't want to sell this milk because we figure, uh, or we as we're assuming that there could it, there could be a danger to the health, welfare, and safety of the consumer. Yet, and they're willing to go what uh, what Governor Batty said of the small sales. And they're willing to do that away when every penny counts to the success and the and the future of those dairies. They're willing to stop doing this for the health, welfare, and safety of our citizens. You know, and then we're then and then now, you know, they're asking the dairies to, well, don't forego the health, welfare, and safety of the consumers. Let us add more regulation onto you so you can label your milk so we can sell this milk. Whatever it's going to cost the dairies to label and test is going to go, the, the, the profitability of 
that little profitability of the sale of Rondo when it go away. What I would like to see, Mr. Chairman, is allow this bill to move forward under the judiciary and then let the Senator meet with the people who are here to discuss uh, the ramifications of testing and labeling and everything to the small to the dairy. And then, and, then, and then make a decision when we have time, we have two weeks. Let me go to the judiciary that come to the floor. Let's deal with it. I just did the, you know, kind of some very rough calculations. My concern, I actually support this bill in that when Louis Pasteur figured out what was killing people from milk by pasteurizing, it was a huge, huge uh, benefit to public health. I mean, millions of people no longer died from uh, unpasteurized milk. And as I look at the numbers that were actually here on the thing we were handed, support access to raw milk, Raw milk is about 50 times more dangerous than pasteurized milk, based on these numbers. Now, I didn't do it exactly, I did just kind of some rough in my head calculations, but if you look at the percent of people who drink raw milk compared to the other, and the total number of diseases and things, it's much more dangerous. And so my concern, and I think we, or at least I feel as a senator, is I've got some responsibility to protect public health. Raw milk is very dangerous. and. I think that's some of our responsibility. So I, I think we, as far as commercial milk, we ought to be protecting milk and have it pasteurized. So Senator Shanko. Uh Chairman, uh, Senator, I know that we had a conversation around this. I also grew up, you know, drinking raw milk and cheese, and maybe that's why I'm only five foot five. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm trying. I read this bill. I'm looking at the dialogue. On one hand, we want you know our open markets. We want consumer choice. We want our farms to be you know healthy. We want to restore what we've been doing in Mexico for thousands of years. And, you know, reducing. We want to teach our kids to know where their food comes from, and the farms and animals and all of that. And, you know, I, you know, I'm trying to think about, you know, and of course the safety and stuff. But, you know, to me, I look at this, you know, it's a you know, consumer choice. You know, if people, if it's labeled, if people decide that this is what they want to drink, you know, why shouldn't they? You know what the risk, uh, inherent risks are to me. I know that pasteurized milk, you know, I mean, I looked at the data and I kind of done a little bit of background research. But, you know, it's a, it's a tough one. You know, we, 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 we want, you know, uh, I grew up in Amos Valley and uh, Hispanic families in San Ysidro. We grew, you know, we had goats, we had cattle, we was, you know, produced cheese and made a lot of that stuff. It was great with coffee and jelly and uh, and uh, you know, it's yeah. you know, I'm, I'm having a tough time. You know, because on one hand, there's small yeah. farmers, and we're not talking about I think farmers out of the east. I think we're talking about farmers mostly from you know. Northern parts with you know a small mom and pop that know where their uh, you know know what they're feeding their cows or goats and, and, and I'm not what's what's the percentage of, of uh, sales you know maybe senator or somebody out there in terms of uh, is it is it more to individuals like I like would have been done in Amos like where the family from San Antonio will come to our village in Amos and walk around the village and do sales like that. As opposed to you know, going to you know, have it at the store, I mean, I don't know what percentage we're talking about. Here. That that, uh, Mr. Chair and Senator, is, is something that I do not know that I would be willing to talk to the, the producers of this product if, if, uh, if, if that's the desire of the committee. Uh, you know, I can bring more information on this to the committee. <laughs> if you would rather be take time to go into more depth as to what we might need to do with this bill, it's, 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 I'll make it this way. It, it's the greatest choice. Well, no, I appreciate that. And again, I, I don't want to step on the members of the committee. I just will say what, I, what I'm hearing, and I, I sitting here, I, I don't know the answer to this. I mean, I think Senator Payne's right. We've got two sides, and it just seems to me that the better thing to do is to get 
get them in a room and figure out if there is, because we're not asking the, all the dairy to do labeling. Let's be real clear about that. This is only those dairies that do raw milk. And again, I think that one of the things that can happen as a result of the, of the discussion is they can make the decision that that's something that works for them to be able to do the product. But I, I, don't, I don't see this as a huge, you know, labeling issue for the, the bulk of the dairies that aren't doing the raw milk. Uh, but, but I do, you know, I hear kind of, and I think Senator Shendo's points right. I mean, there are people that clearly want to make this choice. And so again, it's, you know, my, my individual preference would be that it's better, because again, think of just sending this forward to the Judiciary Committee, you think we're having trouble with this bill here, you know, but the Judiciary Committee is going to be in no better place to deal with this. The better thing, it would seem to me, would be to, to try and get everybody around the table and then work on, you know, really try and come up with something that you can come back and then have, have buy-in, or, or maybe there's not buy-in. So that's my preference, but again, I, I, I don't want to I leave it up to the you know, uh, Mr. Chair. Why don't we just roll this deal, and, and, and then I'll have a dialogue with the producers and the NMDA, and I'll try to come up with a better deal. I appreciate that. That's, that's fine with us. I think that makes sense, and again, I, I do, because this is the important <coughs> idea. I just don't want to pass it out of here and then send it into the, to the lawyers. <laughs> 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 Senator Shindo's uh, comment, okay. understand that, that this doesn't, the, the bill would not affect the bulk of the people you're talking about. People that, that, that have herd change, pieces of animals or own their own animals can still drink raw milk. This is only being what we're attempting to deal with this week. And, and I, frankly, I, I think it is an extremely small, small percentage of this point that are actually doing retail sales. So if there's not a big market that we were, we want to get on it now for the report to come. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Senator. Uh, Senator Padilla, you want to do your memorial here?